Wonderful. Oh, I'm so excited to meet with you today, Amanda. Hello, everyone. My name is Heather Levitt Martinez. I'm from Tech Host Academy, and I'm here today speaking with Amanda. Tell us about yourself, Amanda. Hi, Heather. Hi, everyone. I'm Amanda Fenton, and I am a participatory process designer, which is kind of a like fancy way of saying I help design meetings for participation, um, mostly in the online world these days, and I work mostly in the nonprofit and social change world. And doesn't it make sense that we want to speak to each other, right? Because we have a lot of things in common. A lot of our, we have these really great creative intersections and we hardly know each other. So we're going to talk today. We're just being totally transparent that we met in a networking session. We thought, let's go live and talk about what we love to do. And I would love to learn what is the work you're doing these days that make you say yes. Oh, this is such a juicy question. I, um, I, was reflecting on this before we got to be live together. And some of my work these days that's just lighting me up is um, called what a colleague of mine is calling communities of action. So some folks that are working on um, social change. Uh, one example is the Transform the Family Justice System Collaborative. So we have these, these groups that are all working on some strategic objectives who are coming together like every couple of months, you know, over, you know, gosh, I think we're like two years into some of them now. Um, so that sort of distributed work um, with folks that are deeply committed to really complex uh, social change issues is, is some of the work that I'm really enjoying. Like, how do we do this online well together? Um, and then the other thing is hybrid gatherings. I've been super geeky and super into like, how do we do participatory hybrid gatherings really well for roomies and zoomies. I love that you say that. And I can't wait to dive more into what you're actually doing because I can hear a little bit around you're doing some facilitation, but it also sounds like you're also um, working in between the meetings too, right? Helping teams as well. Yeah. Love and it. I, and Oh, I was going to say, I would I'll almost say I mostly don't do as much facilitation anymore. I'm more mm -hmm. designing for um, other um, leaders and project team members to pick those parts up, but I'm behind the scenes, um, you know, designing all of that. And then of course, tech hosting and harvest hosting, like how do we harvest together in these online sessions to feed into the work that's going to be coming next? Yeah. Love it. Absolutely. I'd love, love to it. hear from you and I cut you off. I'm so sorry. How about you? What's the work that you're just saying yes to these days? Yeah. Well, for me, it's really about getting to work with clients that I share the same values. So it, um, I do a lot of one-offs, a lot of people calling me, needing help. And I, I love doing the work that I know will make a big difference in the world. Of course, mm -hmm. I think we all kind of feel that way. And while I love tech hosting for artists and calligraphers, because I do a lot of that, um, I love to work with organizations that are working to protect human rights and and or anyone that's using an appreciative inquiry approach, um, that's what gets me really excited. So um, a lot of my, I do have some longstanding clients that I love to work with, but I love working with new folks too, because I love new challenges. Mm. So that's pretty much my big thing. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Can I go back and ask you a question more about, uh, because you said you're doing less of facilitation, but are you working with, um, do you have longstanding clients or do you have, are you um, open to new clients? Mm. Um, yes, yes, and yes, I guess is the, are the questions. Mm -hmm. um, I have, I'm fortunate, I think, to have some longstanding client relationships um, where, you know, they call me on a as needed basis, or um, we're sort of committed to a stretch of work together. Um, I mean, I think really relationships are so key to to how I work. You know, I, I have a colleague who says, you know, friendship is the business model. And, you know, that's really, you know, how, when I, I it show up at my best is like when I'm working with people that like, I want to have a cup of tea with you and let's hang out. Um, so fortunate to have some longstanding client relationships um, and always welcoming new ones. Um, nice. Similar to you, you know, I do a lot of one-off sessions like, hey, Amanda, can you help us design and host this event, this symposium, this thing? Um, and then it might go great. And like, that's it. You know, they might reach yeah. out to me in a couple more years. So it's a, it's a lovely mix, I would say. Yeah. I like to have that mix too. It's kind of fun to be, have new things to do every day. I swear every day is different for me. So totally, totally, <laughs> totally. Um, 
I, I feel like you were going to ask me one more question. So I'm going to pause. I kind of do. I, ask you I, it's like, I want to know how, when you talk about design, um, mm-hmm. it sounds like you get really excited about that. And I do too. And I'm, I'm curious, and you talked about harvesting as well. Can you say more about your approach and then what that harvesting might look like? Kind of paint mm-hmm. a picture. Yes, totally. Um, so my, my approach to design comes from the art of hosting community. Um, there's a kind of a particular tool called the chaotic stepping stones, mm-hmm. um, which is what really my approach to design comes from. So it really begins with starting with a, a core team. So having a, a group of folks, not just me, not just like the client, but actually a group of folks made up of folks who will be coming. So we have a, a good diversity of perspective right at the very beginning in our design work, Wonderful. Um, which is so important. Like I you know, I know a lot, but I also don't know. I'm not a young person. I'm not someone who lives with, say, a visual disability or um, different lived expertise. And so having that, like right from the very beginning on our design team is so, so important. Um, And then we go through a series of questions together. We start with like, what's the need? You know, what's going on around us that makes this important? Um, what's the purpose? Like, what do we want to do or create or inspire, you know, as a result of our work together? Uh, who are the people coming? You know, why does this matter to them? Why does it care? Why do they care? Mm-hmm. Um, and the principles, you know, what are, how are the ways that we are together? Um, you know, they're just as important as what we do. And so um, this is where people can bring in if they have equity orientated principles. Um, it, you know, we, we need to build that into our meetings and even yeah. into the design of our meetings. Absolutely. So that's the a little bit of the short version of some of the, the it's very collaborative. It's very iterative. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the harvesting is a really big part of that. It's like, what do we want to harvest? Um, and just to say, I know some people have like a bit of ouch, you know, with that word, because it can have some connotations. Sure. Um, for me, it's like reminding us that we're living systems. And so, yes. you know, what do we want to have in our hands and also in our hearts, some of the intangibles uh, by the end of our time together. Um, yes. And then we plan for that. We design for that. We build it in. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much. Not only do you paint a beautiful picture, but I feel good just listening to you. (laughs) A lot of people ask me if I'm art of hosting and I'm like, no, I've never taken a class. I'm appreciative inquiry, but it's so aligned, right? So we, we have a core team. We, we use the five phases for us. It's about defining and discovering. And for the dream phase, I actually have a series of visual templates that I use for the harvesting piece. Um, And one of them is a needs assessment assessment based on appreciative resilience. What do we truly need in order to meet those desired outcomes? And then um, thinking about the needs of the group and everything from what's going to help them um, appreciate, love, um, inquire, venture, and um, and evolve into what we want to become. And I just love that you were talking about how it is iterative, right? Yeah. It's, it's so, it's very collaborative and I love that work. And I can't wait to have more conversations with you about this too, but I'm sure we could die. Let's talk about other things. Let's talk about, I'm, I'm curious and I just love it. We geeked out quick. Is there anything else you want else you want to geek out on or anything else that's getting you excited today? Um, oh gosh. Well, first of all, I feel like I would love to ask a million questions just based sure. on, on what you shared, but, um, maybe, maybe just to do that, um, just knowing how powerful visuals are, um, mm-hmm. you know, in, in, even in the before times when I worked a lot, mostly in person, you know, being able to bring in visual templates for people, um, et cetera. Um, just, I would love to hear like, what, what do you love to do in the online space to, to be able to support groups in their work, either in their planning work, but also like when mm-hmm. they're live together. Absolutely. And this is both has to do with me as a visual practitioner and an AI uh, facilitator, but even as a tech host, even as a tech host in my classes that I teach um, at Tech Host Academy, we use all kinds of third party collaboration tools, right? So Mural and Miro and um, anything where we can communicate with each other. I'm a big proponent of Padlet because it's so fast and easy. It's like, boom. Um, I work with um, a lot of groups that are retired 
age and older. And so a lot of them don't have a lot of, they're not interested in doing mural. If they haven't touched a sticky note, maybe in 20 years. So why would they <laughs> like to do mural, you know, and that's, it can be really complicated. And so I love to create an instant gallery of images and ideas, say in Padlet. Mm. Um, so that's a big piece for me. And, and, and you use those tools too, right? I do. I do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And how do you know, I'd love to know, how do you know um, the tech savviness of a group and what is the right or a good fit, I would say, or appropriate fit for a third-party collaboration tool? How do you decide? And then how do you, um, I guess this is a big question for all of us to answer for ourselves. And then how do we prep people for that? Mm. Oh, this is so important. Um, And I think too, what I hear underneath your question is, you know, are we choosing tools that help people feel like they belong and are included? Or are we choosing tools that people feel like, oh, I can't keep up. This isn't for me. I can't participate fully. So right. I just really love that awareness, you know, that's underneath your question. Um, what one, one of my like initial considerations, this is going to sound very opposite. What I just said is the size of the group. Yeah. Um, because while some tools are like super easy and lower, low barrier to entry, they don't work well once we are in like 150 people, you know, in a session. And so my, my size of groups can really range from, you know, 20 people to 175 people. Mm-hmm. Um, and so sometimes like the first, you know, decision point for me is like, how big is the group? Yeah. Um, and if we're, you know, pretty large, like a hundred plus, then I am going with Miro often, Um, Mm -hmm. But the main indicator is, oh, I really need to do some skill building with folks, some capacity building so that folks, once we are live together, Mm -hmm. people feel more able to jump in. So, you know, pre-sessions, drop in, like I'll host a tech drop-in session, like come hang out with me, bring your tea, let's play around in Miro a little bit if you want. Nice. Um, Miro welcome places, like a kind of a sandbox where people can go ahead of time. Yeah. Um, so size of group is, is one thing. Um, and then another part in is, um, um, in terms of the tech savviness, trying it out, going back to our, our core team, actually mm-hmm. using the tools in our design process starts to give some indicators like, oh, you know, people, even in our design team, folks are struggling a little bit with this or like, let's try this tool instead. It really gives us some real time, uh, information, mm-hmm. um, yeah. Oh, I feel like I could say a lot more. I'm going to say one one tiny more thing on this because I, it is a big part of my decision process is what do how do we need to work with the information after the session? Yes. Uh, because some of these tools are wonderful for during mm-hmm. um, and they're like a lot harder to work with the data afterwards. Yeah, that's um, right. And so that's often another like really big consideration for me is, um, you know, is it okay if it kind of lives there or do we need to pull it out and work with it in different ways? Oh my gosh, I could go on and on and on. But I, <laughs> I know there's a lot to the design process, yeah, isn't there? there yeah. Really is. And there's, and, and, you know, there's the design process and then there's the tech piece, right? Mm-hmm. So as a tech host, I like to create what I call them tech check sessions, just to make sure everybody's vitals are good. Those are usually really quick wins, right? Those are the top five are like the sound, the lighting, the video, the internet, and what are you using? Um, you know, what's, you know, what's your computer, that kind of thing, all of that is yeah. going on. But then I do like to kind of pulse them and, and, and how much do we know about, you know, these different platforms, but yeah, it all comes down to that design group is helping you do that. And uh, I love it. Cause you're like firing on all these different levels about, you know, design, but then also the tech piece is a really important piece. And for people that are just tech hosting, they may not know all of the design process, but they mm-hmm. do know that they've got to help with that to help that facilitated process move along. And I love it that you put that design hat right back on when you're like thinking about how is this going to be used later on? Because you want that great work to keep momentum because it instills trust and collaboration for the next project. And it shows maybe other stakeholders or decision makers, you know, all the great work that you've done. Mm -hmm. And to be able to have a visual artifact of that or or even, you know, mural, anything like that um, really does lend uh, additional benefits for those who want to keep that, even if it's a change management piece going, just keeps that conversation going, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. 
more, more we could click on click on there and I know we're time time is ticking um yeah I wonder if I could ask you a question sure um I think I would love to hear a little bit on um where do you see the future of online hosting trending um just knowing that you're so deep in this and I just feel like you have a real eye on the horizon so I'd love to hear yeah what are you thinking about what's the future what do you hope for yeah, well, I don't think it's I don't think meeting online this online like this is going to go away. In fact, this is where I think that we're really in our adolescent stages still. Um, for me, I think that uh, tech hosting, what I call tech hosting, other people might call it producing or something else. I think it's a necessity. And as technology changes and grows, we're going to need more and more people helping with that in less in a technology way, but more in a social way, right? Mm -hmm. So even though I can look to the future and say, you know, artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, virtual reality, holograms, all of those things are going to be there We're and they're going to happen. And we're going to, it's going to kind of be a little bit of a, a uh, I, I don't want to say challenge, but it's going to be a pretty big learning curve for some folks. Others might just embrace it quite naturally, especially those who are building it, right? But I really might, I guess my dream here would be that tech hosting becomes a skill, like a secondary skill, like typing. You know, it's something that we all do. We don't really think about. So it's really helping other people along the way. Um, I do have a little bit of a part of me that says some people might see it as, well, that's the soft skill or the glue work. It's not as important, but I think it's, I think it needs to be prioritized. And I think it would make it a lot easier for all of us if we did just a little bit of that. If everybody had a little bit of that, they don't have to have all the design. They don't have to have all the technology, but I think being willing to get into an online session and work together is going to be really key. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I love that. I just love the view that, you know, if everyone, if everyone has these skills or to be able to prioritize everyone having like just a little bit of skill in it, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. just how much that builds the capacity across all groups and really serves the work that they're doing in, in better and better ways. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It makes me think like for those who were uh, prior to the pandemic, who couldn't type very well? And so they would use a lot of their influence around the water cooler or in meetings, um, and maybe they didn't use a lot of written, you know, communication. But now that we're all working from home, it's sort of like that was our only portal for a while, except for maybe, you know, some Zoom calls and, and phone calls, but still mm -hmm. a lot of, a lot is happening with writing and typing and things like that. So I think there's a certain level of uh, tech hosting literacy we should all have in order for us to all be in environments where we can thrive. Yeah. To help create that environment. Yeah. But yeah, we could, I have a feeling we could talk forever. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else, I don't know if any else is enjoying this. And if you are, please let us know in the chat. Um, but I would love for folks and let's do this again. Let's plan on doing this again sometime, but how can folks get to know you or get to find you, Amanda? And, uh, I, let me start with this. Who do you want to work with next? And maybe they'll, maybe they'll um, reach out to you. Oh, cool. Um, I would say I would love to work with groups who are thinking about hybrid. You know, that would be one thing. Folks that um, want to do hybrid in participatory ways and, and like help us think through this. You know, how do we design and what kind of tech needs do we have? I'm super interested in, in that kind of work. Um, and yeah, I would say... Um, what is the other thing? Oh, I loved also doing skill building, like folk kind of picking up on what you were just saying. So mm -hmm. organizations or groups that are like, hey, can you just like, you know, host us for a little while so we can practice our tech skills, our online, you know, designing for participation skills. So that uh, capacity building part of my work, I also really love and, and welcome that too. That's wonderful. It's so needed. I mean, if we all did that, we could all just work and collaborate so much easier together. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And um, I would say for me, it's about um, helping meetings becoming more engaging, efficient, and equitable through tech hosting specifically. Mm -hmm. And I do take an appreciative inquiry approach. So I'm interested in working with um, organizations too that want to build up that capacity in teams, but individuals, um, whether you're mm -hmm. a facilitator or even an online learner that just wants your experience to be better. So to me, it's mm -hmm. about um, helping uh, people build that tech hosting capacity just to be better online citizens. So, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Great. Well, thank you so much, Amanda. I can't wait to connect with you more and more. And if anybody has any questions, please put them in the comments below or reach out to us directly. Thank you.